hundred. Oh, I didn't see you over there. I was just busy working out and exercising. Wait, am I supposed to be teaching right now? Um, okay, uh, I guess, can, can you take over? Hello and welcome to a new week of learning. My name is Ms. Glass. I am a second grade teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary and I am excited to be here today to learn with all of you. Now today, I am excited because we are going to be doing all kinds of bending and stretching together. To get ourselves ready, I wanna make sure you have everything you need. So at the very end of the lesson today, you're going to need some paper and something to write and draw with. So be prepared for that at the end. If you have a packet, you can use that. And today during the lesson, if you would like to speak in your own home language, go for it. That's awesome. Um, another thing that you might need today is a partner. Now, some of you might have someone at home that you can bring on into the room and they can be your partner. And for some of you, you might need to use your imagination like me, like I'm going to imagine that all of you are right here in my classroom and I'm gonna be teaching all of you. Hey guys, okay, hey. So I'll just, I'll say hello to all my friends here. So now that we have that prepared, we need to get our bodies ready. To get our bodies ready, we're gonna take some deep breaths and I'm gonna teach you a new way to do that today. The way that we're going to breathe today is going to use our bones and muscles. You are going to imagine that you have some heavy weights in your hands. Can you picture it? They're in your hands. You're gonna put those hands by your side and then you are going to breathe in as you lift up and let it out as you breathe out. So let's try it. Ready? Breathe in and then out. Let it out. Okay, lift it up again. Ready? In and then out. And then one more time. Let's lift those weights. Ready? In and then out. I don't know about you, but I feel very ready to learn. Last time we were together, we read some nonfiction expository texts together. And if you remember what nonfiction expository texts are, you remember that they are books with true information in them. They have facts about people, places, and things. And it's not a story, right? They're telling you true facts. So if you remember last week, we read snails. And we also read the article, Snail Food. So this week, we're gonna continue on that path of nonfiction reading with some more expository books. And I'm excited to start that out with you. Today, the book that we're going to read, it's one of my favorites. It is called Bend and Stretch. So today, like I said, we're gonna be bending and stretching a little bit as we read this. And I'm excited to do that with you today. To learn a little bit more about this book, we are going to look at the front cover because that tells us a lot about what's going to happen in this book. So I'm going to read the title and the author and any other information on there. The title is Bend and Stretch. Seems to have a picture of someone reaching up and it says learning about your bones and muscles. Hmm. And the author is Pamela Hill Nettleton and the illustrator is Becky Scheip. So now I know a little bit more about what to expect in the book. So the front cover is a great place to look, but there's also another place you can look to find out about the book. Hmm, what could it be? Aha! The back cover of the book. The back cover of the book often has a little blurb on the back. And on the back, it has information about the book. So on the back, it says, bend and stretch, learning about your bones and muscles. And then there's a little blurb. It says, how do you know how your body stands, runs, or jumps? Your bones and muscles allow you to do those things. Find out how they work together to keep you growing and moving in this book about your amazing body. So the back of this book has a summary about what we're going to read in the book, which actually that is a text feature. <gasps> Let's add summary of the book on the back cover to our text feature chart. Take a look at our text feature chart. And now we've got a new one there at the bottom. Those are really stacking up. We're learning a lot of text features. 
Go us. For this first part of the book, you are actually going to use one of your comprehension strategies of visualizing. If you remember visualizing, that means making a mental image. So for the first part, you're not even going to see the inside of the book. You're just going to visualize in your mind. Now for me, when I'm trying to visualize something, it really helps if I cut out all the distractions around me. So for this part, because you're going to be visualizing, imagining what you see, I would like you to whoop, close your eyes. When you close your eyes, that makes it so it's quiet and focused in your head. So I'm going to read the first part, and the first part you'll notice is all about bones. So listen carefully, and we're going to visualize as I read. Tap your foot. Wave your hand at a friend. How does your body do that? It uses bones and muscles. Inside of your body, you have a skeleton made of bones. Bones are strong and hard. Bones help you hold your body upright. Muscles are like bundles of stretchy rubber bands that hold your bones together. They are attached to your bones and help them move. You and a giraffe have the same number of neck bones. The giraffes are just bigger than yours. When you were a baby, you had more bones than you do now. Babies have about 300 bones that are soft and flexible, like firm rubber. Some bones join together as you get older. Your bones are also get harder as you grow. Adults have 206 bones that are hard and strong. Around age 25, all of your bones will be hard. Then you will stop growing. If your skeleton were made of metal, you would be too heavy to move. Your bones are strong, but light. Bones are light and easy to move because they are not solid inside. Instead, they are filled with a jelly-like substance called bone marrow. Bone marrow's job is to make new blood cells. On the outside, bones are smooth. You can open your eyes again. So now that we've read the first part of Benjamin Stretch Out Loud and we learned more about bones, I want to know what did you visualize as we were reading today? So take a moment to think and then be prepared to answer, what did you visualize? Hmm. Maybe you were like me and you thought it was fascinating that we have the same number of neck bones as a giraffe and you were visualizing how big a giraffe is. Maybe you've seen it at the zoo. Or maybe you were thinking about how bones are actually hollow inside and you were picturing that bones were really light and hollow, but they have that jelly inside called marrow, called bone marrow. Maybe that's what you visualized in your mind as you were reading. We're going to keep reading, but this time I'm going to show you the pictures as we read so that you can do some visualizing of your own, but also use the illustrator's pictures to help guide you. The next part that we're going to read is all about muscles. Bones protect the important soft parts of your body. Your skull protects your brain. Your rib cage cage protects your heart, lungs, and stomach. Your longest bone is your thigh bone. Your smallest bone is behind your eardrum. Grab your elbow. Feel it bend and move. Your elbow is a joint. A joint is a place where two bones meet. A joint is a good place to see how muscles work. Muscles attach to bones on each side of a joint. The muscles stretch and shrink as the joint is straightened and bent. Right here we can see a picture of a joint. Shoulder joint, muscles. These muscles stretch and shrink as you bend and straighten your elbow. Elbow joint.
Muscles that help your skeleton move are called skeletal muscles. These muscles get bigger and stronger when you make them work hard. I want you to stop right here and think, what have we learned about muscles so far? What have we learned? Take a moment to think about that. Some of you probably said that muscles are attached to bones, right? They help bones move. Maybe we talked about joints. Let's keep reading. That's why figure skaters have big leg muscles. That's why basketball players have big arm muscles. So in this part of the book, they tell us a little bit more about some athletes. My question for you is this. What is the reason they say Figure skaters have big leg muscles and basketball players have big arm muscles. What's the reason for that? Take a moment to think. Maybe you said that basketball players have to have really big muscles so that they can dunk the basket in. Or maybe you're thinking about figure skaters and how fast they have to skate and do all those twirls and jumps. They have to have big muscles. They work their muscles really hard and they get bigger when they do that. Let's keep reading. Did you ever break a bone? Then you know that bones are alive and growing. They can mend and get better. When something mends, that means that it can be fixed or it can heal. Did you ever pull a muscle? Pulling a muscle is actually tearing your muscle. Muscles can heal like bones. Some muscles work on their own. Your heart is one muscle that does this. Exercise is good for your muscles. Ride a bike, chase a ball. Moving keeps your muscles strong. Exercise is good for bones too. Bones and muscles also like it when you eat right and drink lots of water. That helps them work well. Make a face. Your face has more than 30 muscles. Take good care of your bones. Wear a helmet when you ride a bike. Wear elbow and knee pads when you skate on skateboards. What muscles work the hardest? Surprise! They're your eye muscles that move about 100,000 times each day. Take good care of your muscles. Stretch them every day. Reach for the sky. So now I want to know what did you find out about bones and muscles in this part of the book? Take a moment to think. Maybe you talked about how muscles need to be worked to get bigger. Or maybe you talked about how it's really important to drink water to take care of yourself. There's all kinds of things that we could do to take care of ourselves. So now that we have read Bend and Stretch, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the book. Some of you noticed that when I was reading this one part, I'm sure you noticed it, that there was something that you recognized it was a diagram. Remember when we learned about diagrams and we read about snail food? There's an amazing diagram in this book. In this diagram, we learned about a joint. We learned that the shoulder joint is right up here. That muscles, muscles use, or these muscles stretch and shrink as you bend and straighten your elbow. And there's an elbow joint. It has labels on the diagram. Remember text features like diagrams can teach you more about the book than just the writing up above, right? Text features tell us all kinds of information and diagrams are a great way to get new information from a book. So now that we have read Bend and Stretch, we are going to go into my favorite part, which is a book discussion. In our book discussion, we're going to think about what we've learned from Bend and Stretch and you're going to have some time to share as well. My first question, it's a big one. It's, what did you learn about bones and muscles from this book? 
think about it. Maybe you were remembering that bones have bone marrow in them. They have that jelly-like substance. Or maybe you were thinking about how when you pull a muscle, it's actually tearing the muscle, but it can heal and come back together. There is so much to learn from this book. I've got another question for you. This one is maybe something that's not in the book. And that is, what are you still wondering about bones and muscles after reading this book? Hmm. Maybe you're like me and you're wondering, how big can muscles get? Or maybe you're wondering, when bones break, how do they mend? How do they get back together? That's something the book doesn't tell us that maybe we can do some more research on. My last question for you is this. Why do you think the author, remember Pamela Hill Nettleton, wrote this book? Why did she write this book? Take a moment to think. Maybe you think she wrote this book because she wanted to teach us about the human body because we all have one, right? We all have bodies with muscles and bones in them and it's good to know more about yourself. Or maybe she wrote this book because she wanted to do her own research on it and when she writes a book, she has to research herself and so this was a great excuse for her to research and find out more about an interesting topic. It was fun reading this book with you, and now we are going to move right into vocab. Welcome to our vocab portion of the day. Now, if you remember from our book, Bend and Stretch, we learned a little bit about babies. When you were a baby, you had more bones than you do now. Babies have about 300 bones that are soft and flexible, like firm rubber. So you probably heard an interesting word in that part of the book, and that word was flexible. That is the vocab word for today. The word, say it with me, is flexible. So to learn a little bit more about flexible, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about it, and we're gonna play some games as well. So one thing we know is that flexible means that it's easy to bend, right? So we learned that something that's easy to bend Example in the book, they said a baby's bones are flexible. Hmm, a baby's bones. Oh, like this baby. So, for example, we can see this baby is very flexible. In fact, this baby can lift his leg all the way up to his back, to his mouth. So, yeah, we can already see that baby's bones are flexible. Thanks, Max. Anyway. Now we're gonna play a game I like to call flexible or not flexible. So the game works like this. I'm gonna give you something, give you an object, and you're gonna say, I think this is flexible because, or you might think, I think this is not flexible because, and you're gonna answer that question, okay? I'm gonna leave the sentence stems up here so you can read along. All right, the first one for flexible or not flexible is, ready? A stick of gum. Flexible or not flexible? You can use the sentence stem right here. You can say, a stick of gum is flexible because, or you could say, a stick of gum is not flexible because. Ready? Take a moment just to think. Some of you might have just said a stick of gum is flexible because you can bend it and squish it and move it around, right? Something that's flexible. All right, I've got another one for you. Are you ready? Flexible or not? A pencil. A pencil. Flexible or not? And you can use the sentence stem up here. 
I think a pencil is flexible because, or you might say, I think a pencil is not flexible because. Take a moment to think. Some of you just said, I think a pencil is not flexible because when you try and bend a pencil, it doesn't really go anywhere. So our first word today was flexible. And what we learned about the word flexible is that it is easy to bend. That's what flexible means. So let's move on to our second vocab word of the day, which is attach. So if you remember in this section here, I'm going to reread just so you can remember. Inside of your body, you have a skeleton made up of bones. Bones are strong and hard. Bones help hold your body upright. Muscles are like bundles of stretchy rubber bands that hold your bones together. They are attached to your bones and help them move. That word right there was attach. So what we can see here is the word attach. And when you attach something, that means that you fasten or connect it to something else. So that's what attach means. I have a question for you. And what I brought with me today are two pieces of paper. They are not together. They are not attached. They are not connected together. My question for you is how can we attach these papers? Take a moment to think. Some of you just thought of something that I like to keep in my office, which is a stapler. You could attach pieces of paper together by stapling them. And now my papers are no longer loose, but they are attached. So now we know that when you attach something, that means that you connect it to something else. So we're going to play a little game here, which is how do you attach it? So I want you to think something right now. Um, I want you to imagine you are riding your bike. Can you picture it? You're riding your bike along the street. It's beautiful. And then you decide, you know what? I want to put some balloons onto my bike. I want to attach some balloons to my bike. So my question for you is this. How can you attach the balloons to your bike. What could you do? Hmm. I got it. One way you could attach balloons to a bike is you could tie a string to your handlebars so that when you ride your bike, those balloons could fly by in the background. Sounds fun. Today we learned the word attach and we learned that attach means to connect to something else. So today, thanks for doing our vocab. I will see you in the next section. Okie dokie, friends. It's the best part of the day. It is time to read. I am so excited to read today, and I'm sure you are too. Today, I brought with me an expository nonfiction book. Remember the kind of book that has text features, it tells true facts and information, it's not a story, it's true information, right? So today I brought with me Heroines, Remarkable and Inspiring Women. Hmm, I'm excited to read today. Today as you're reading your own nonfiction books at home, I want you to make sure that you are looking out for those text features. You can even think about our text feature list right here and consider all those different text features as you read to find out more information. I'm going to enjoy my book today, and I hope you do too. 